We are going. Yes. Welcome to Falcon the Winner's Order, Episode 5 Truth Thoughts. Now, as usual, spoilers for things you leading up to this point, including this episode. And I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. And really, upcoming MCU in general. I should add that to the from now on. Okay. As usual, I recommend videos to all my strengths and such on show, especially videos made by Rockstar, Screenwright, Nerdist, CBR, Screen Crush, and I just found another channel who does the, these black nerd comedy. He does really great videos. Now, right, so a couple of off-topic things. I'm fairly sure this is not the first time I have sung the praises of Brennan Lee Mulgan in a video. But it bears repeating. So, College Humor just put out a video that is a message from the CEO of All Reels. As usual, this means we get to enjoy Brinley Mulligan playing as CEO. I could spend countless hours just listening to him be exasperated about products that he's finding out about as a CEO. At times, he's whispering softly. At times, he's shouting. At all times, he's hilarious. Folding Ideas just put out a video criticizing the Nostalgia Critics review of The Wall. It's excellent, like almost everything Folding Ideas has ever put out. I hope that Scaredy Matt of the Scared Cat channel keeps up the Bobby Duke cameos. They give me life. And here we go, into the episode. So the previous on includes that Carly called John, you Nazi. That's, yeah, she's, she's, she's not one to mince words. And, yeah, so we see John uh, running, and he's flashing back to, to killing the guy. And, let's see. Yeah, I, I, I like that, uh, you know, I don't think the episode would have been as powerful if, if we saw the crowd. I think it was the perfect way to end last episode. But I'm really glad that, you know, basically, just, let's see, so, so briefly, like, John Walker runs off because he, you know, it, it was a really powerful experience and he doesn't really want to, you know, people to keep filming him. And Carly doesn't chase him because she's not as interested in killing him as she is in stopping the the GRC you know John is just a tool he's not in charge of the GRC so she wouldn't I, I mean besides which she did just fight him and there were what four you know super soldiers and they lost you know I mean okay so they managed to kill Lamar but they otherwise they did lose that fight and you know Part of that was because he, you know, in addition to John, they were also fighting both Falcon and Bucky, but who's to say that they wouldn't fight again, you know? Meanwhile, Bucky can, can't, you know, most people can't catch up to John because he runs super fast now. Bucky can because he's got super soldier serum. Falcon has wings. Uh, uh, um, he drank a Red Bull earlier, I think. Possibly off camera. And... I really appreciate that even now that John has fully crossed into doing something evil, his humanity is still being asserted. He's not the... Let's see. Let's see. What does that say? Uh, okay, sometimes my notes... Let's see. Yeah, the... the you know, he yeah, he's not like... Uh, you know, feeling great because he just killed Carly's right-hand man, he's saddened by Lamar's death. You know, it's it's the kind of thing where he has to stop doing what he's doing, but you don't feel like he's doing it just to be evil. You know, this is not just like the... the let's see, can I come up with an example of an MCU villain who just wanted to, eh, not off the top of my head, but yeah, you know, Walker, stop walkering, don't go down that road, believe me, it doesn't end well, Bucky would know, and he legitimately does not want someone else to go down his path, 
you know, like he could he could easily be like pushing John or being really, you know, I mean he's he's not exactly a fan of John, you know. Earlier he was it episode two I think where he was like things are kind of intense for you aren't they and there was that other you know and at first he didn't want to step in and help John fight the Dora Milaje you know at first he's you know Falcon's like we got to do some something and Bucky's like looking strong John <laughs> like he's like like it's a a boxing match or something and he's the trainer and just like okay keep keep going. You gotta give me the shield, man. Sam is still trying to avoid a fight. You know, he he doesn't like say hand over the shield or else. He's like, dude, you you know this. You know it by now. You have to admit, you should not be carrying that shield. Amazing fight between John Walker and the two titular characters. Why are you making me do this? Why are you making me do this? Look what they just made John do. And again, it's it's like. It's like this sort of gaslighting, abusive partner kind of thing, you know, that's so many men who can't handle their temper have hit some, it's not only men, have, have hit their partner and right after or even as they're doing it, they'll say, why did you make me do that? You know, it's, again, like John, I, I don't, I'm not hoping they'll like kill him off. I, you know, what he needs is therapy. You know, he he needs some help to cope with with the pain and the trauma, you know, and, you know, as as a as a fan of a piece of fiction, as you know, stepping off the, the you know, stepping out of the, the therapist chair for a second. I'm really hoping he survives the show because I would really like, you know, he meets like, OK, I can't say Val, but I'll keep it in my head. He meets her, and I kind of get the feeling that maybe he's going to be recruited for, like, oh, let's see, Masters of Evil or Thunderbolts. That Those would probably be the, because we got Zemo in there, the power broker may well turn out to be Thunderbolt Ross. I really like how much of the fight is over the shield itself. John considers it his right. It is something he has been given it belongs to him, but the other two are trying to maintain it as a symbol of justice. I am Captain America. Holy crap, he was going to kill Falcon too. Yeah, he is gone. He has fully moved into the ter territory of doing unethical things because he feels like it. You know, he doesn't, like, just say, you know, if you, if you leave now, I won't kill you or something. No, he's going to kill him. They're doing a good job of pulling the shield off his arm, and Star-Lord isn't around to mess it up for them. JK, I still like that scene. And John managed to break Falcon's wings. And I like that Bucky put down the shield next to Sam and walked away, basically admitting it belongs with him. And Sam wipes some of the still fresh blood off the shield. So this really did happen just after the end of the previous episode. There's no... Downtime, downtime between the, yeah. One of the Easter egg people, let's see, he pointed out that, like, Sam is trying to preserve it as a symbol of good. And he kind of feels like he shouldn't have given it up. Like, maybe it's his fault that John, you know, turned it into a murder weapon. And the GRC are having trouble finding Carly. And... Maybe I'll think of it later. Captain America killing someone in public. That's kind of a big deal. International incident. That's big. Oh, right. Torres. Sorry. Torres is back. Pretty cool. If you got the wings, keep them. So it very much looks like Torres is going to become the new Falcon. And I'm thinking they're going to stay with this sort of fairly gritty, realistic thing of the MCU. He's not going to have actual wings in you know on his body like in the comics though that would be fun you know but i mean we're getting the x-men so there's there are a lot of characters who have wings now let's see so yeah the the 
John Walker's title of John of the Captain America is removed and John keeps pressuring for the court to listen to him and he feels betrayed by the military, losing his temper, telling them he did exactly what they told him to do, what they trained him to do. So again, we have this thing of like America not taking care of its heroes. And I do feel like that is very much, John is not, he doesn't mean to be evil. It's just that he can't control his temper and he's, he's too used to doing really awful things. Like he used to realize that they were awful things, but now he seems, or, or maybe he just feels like he has no other choice. You know, once you're willing to do awful things, it doesn't take much of a push to go, as much of a push as for people who've never done anything. Now, let's see. The I'm, I'm not saying that no, everybody eventually does something wrong, but a lot of people won't go, like, extremely wrong. But once you've gone extremely wrong at least once, it takes less to push Sometimes some people overcorrect by going to the anyway, but but yeah, you know, if they had taken care of him, the this wouldn't have happened. You know, when when he came back from war, they should have helped him heal, and yeah, this really is like they, they you know, it's, it was said in an interview that this is a show where the the bad guys, the the good guys understand the bad guys. They, they can see where they're coming from, that kind of thing. And it, it really is, like, every single bad guy in this. I get, uh, briefly, actually, I suppose Batrock, we don't really know what, like, there's, there's not really, but he's really the only one, you know. Zemo, Carly, John, are there others? I guess those are them. Take things one step at a time. First thing is see Lamar's parents. They need you. That's, yeah. I really appreciate that scene, too. And Val shows up, makes a very strong entrance. Is is really, like, I, I, it was, it was, it was so good. Like, the, the, you know, she, she walks up and, and at first, like, she, you know, her, her, like, Boots, I think she's, she does reverse with them with boots. The, at first, they're like, they're out of focus, and they're just, they're, they're marching, you know. She comes walking in, and eventually they come fully into focus, and literally, you know, she says, these boots were not made for walking. And it just, yeah. You did the right thing by taking the serum. Yes, I know about that. You've made yourself very, very valuable to certain people. Yeah. And, yeah, so in the comics... She is Madame Hydra. Uh, you know, the, the sh yeah, Wikipedia has a little bit of detail about her. And yeah, you know, there's a chance she's the power broker. Certainly, it makes a lot of sense for her to be, uh, let me think, be working for the power broker. And yeah, very badass looking middle aged woman. Introduces herself as Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, Countess Valentina Allegra de Fontaine. I know it's it's a lot, so call me that. Well, don't call me that, but just keep it in your head. And played by Julia. Okay, so I heard people say it's Julia Louis Dreyfus. I thought it was Louis Dreyf Louise. Sorry, Louise Dreyfus. But I yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't know for her from a lot. I know she's been amazing in, in like more recent stuff, but you know, to me, she's Elaine. I want to say from Seinfeld. I liked her in that. I, you know, so I'm, yeah, I'm really looking forward to to more. And yeah, again, I, I already said I'm going to be possibly spoiling stuff. She is going to, she, uh, she's she's supposedly also going to be in Black Widow, and that was supposed to come out before this show, but. Corona and everything, but I, I get the feeling that, you know, it's just that, ah, what's it, I, I, if I had to guess, I would say it's going to be late into the Black Widow movie, she's going to show up and she's going to try to recruit someone, 
and the the yeah she only briefly appears and then in this it's it was supposed to be her second appearance it was it was it's supposed to be kind of like how Tony Stark showed up at the end of Incredible Hulk to talk to to Ross you know setting up yeah a team as being as and and you know the, one of the Easter egg people said well if she's gonna be in Black Widow maybe she's gonna hire the uh, I'm sorry El Elena I want to say her name is it's I I don't think I've read about her in the comics but she could be you know she's the she she in the Black Widow trailer, she says like there's that she's Natasha's sister, but so so yeah, you know she could be if if they're setting up the the Dark Avengers, she could be the Black Widow. Maybe Taskmaster will come on and be like the the Hawkeye, and you have John Walker as the Dark Captain America. So yeah, there's I I really love it. They they really dove deep into comic kind of stuff with this like with with these two. You know, Disney Plus streaming series. The the you know the, this thing of like dropping in little character, little, little hints that later on, later will pay off. And it's not that you know some of the movies have done that as well. But the like you know us okay. So for so for one division, a lot of them didn't pay off. You know the so like there were theories that basically like let's see the the ah now I do uh. No, I don't. I I think she I, she called herself Sarah when she wake up when she woke up. The guy, you know, the the uh, Herb I want to say was the role on one division sitcom. You know, people thought uh, high evolutionary. I think it was, and like you know, all kinds of. When really at the end of the day, the only nobody paid off except for Agatha Harkness, and there is still a chance that. Uh, Mephisto, uh, you know, turned out not to be Ralph, and oh yeah, and and you know, people thought that that, myself included, I'm not, you know, saying it's only other people. We thought that maybe that really was, the the Fox X Men movie Quicksilver, but you know, it was just a guy named Ralph, and the the yeah, you know, so a lot of these things ultimately didn't pay off. I do think that Mephisto was behind it, but it'll only be revealed in Doctor Strange 2. Now, if it's not in Doctor Strange 2, I will, you know, in that video, I'll try to remember the mea culpa. I guess, apparently he wasn't. If, if he don't, if he doesn't at least make a, a post credit scene of Avengers, well, excuse me, sorry, I, I washed my hands since I was last out. I know about Corona, but I'm not, I'm not taking any chances, don't worry. The, the, um, yeah, so, you know, end of Avengers 1 style head turn, you know, Thanos head turn of Mephisto in a post credit scene of Doctor Strange 2. If he doesn't at least do that, okay, I guess he was. It was just Agatha and Wanda doing the whole thing. Now, let's see. Or, you know, possibly a Wanda from one of the other universes in the multiverse. Anyway, yeah, so so the John's wife turns over the card. There's nothing on it. Her card is blank. I guess that means she doesn't really exist, meaning no one can find her, no one can get, you know, get a hold of her. One side is black, another side is white, and she mentioned a legal gray area that the, the shield doesn't belong to, Amer to the American government or military or something. So I guess that means she's neither good nor evil, or at least sees herself like that. And Carly expresses frustration, even desperation. And you can really understand, you know, she, she says, how many people, how many lives do we have to lose before we're considered citizens of this, of this planet or something like that? It's time. She's, she looks like someone going to do a bad thing. And Bucky confronts Zemo at the Sokovian Memorial, which... You know, we saw it in the, the trailers. I really thought that was going to show up way, way sooner. Like, there's a bunch of stuff that was in the trailers that only happened in this episode. You know, the the practicing throwing the shield for, for Sam and Bucky. The, the yeah, Sokovian Memorial. You know, the, the, yeah, and, and I think also Sam and Bucky talking about whether they're partners or, 
you know, I'm not saying it was a bad thing. I mean, I didn't exactly expect them to die off in this series, you know, but it, it was a little surprising to me. I thought it would be some of the first stuff we saw, but yeah. And Bucky does the, f what is, it? is it called fake execution? I feel like it's, there's a, there's a term for it, and I think it's technically a war crime, but I mean, it's, it's Zemo. He's done some really awful things. I'm, I'm not saying it's okay to do in real life. And I'm starting to wonder if anyone can fire a gun at him. He couldn't in Civil War. Bucky doesn't hear. And the Dora Milaje show up and take away Zemo. And that's why, you know, Bucky shows up with the gun and, and like, threatens him so that, like, Zemo's not going to try to run, buying a little bit more time, maybe. But we'll take him to the raft where he's going to live out his days. It would be a good idea to make yourself scarce in Wakanda these days, my lord. Now, really, really quickly, I th at least one of the Easter egg people, they work hard, they're stressed, they have deadlines. I'm not blaming them, but one of them, I think it might be Ryan Airy, who usually finds a reference to your mom. He said that it doesn't, like, the, the, you know, White Wolf, that was a name that some children in Wakanda gave him. I don't think it was that they gave him that name. I think it was that they called him by that name. I, I really, as, as far as I understand, when, when he, you know, yeah, they, they, you know, they thought him up, removed the, the, ah, what's it called? Mind control stuff. And then he started doing, you know, I, I don't know if he was quite, you know, in the comics, White Wolf is like security chief or something of Wakanda. I don't know if they gave him quite that high of a position that soon, but, you know, they gave, they gave him some kind of job and they referred to him as White Wolf. And, you know, at, in, the, in the Black Panther post credit scene, he's sleeping and some children, some Wakanda children come in and call him White Wolf. I really don't think it was just that they were, like you know, calling him that, like, they're, they're kids, uh, you know, they're, they're if, if they, ha if they find out that someone extremely powerful is just asleep somewhere they can get to, yeah, they're gonna run up, you know, anyway, I'm really glad they didn't kill Zemo, I'm hoping, you know, in, in the, in the future in the MCU, given that in the comics he gets involved with, let's see, the, the, ah, let me think, Thunderbolts, and Masters of Evil. And, you know, last we saw, the raft was something that Ross, Thunderbolt Ross, was involved in. And, you know, uh, there's maybe a chance that John Walker ends up there by the end of the next episode. And, let's see, he has access to Abomination, I think, still? It's not impossible that leaders out there, I'm still really fingers crossed, you know. I, th I think it's absurd to not give... Uh, I'm sorry, I don't think I can remember his entire name, but the guy who plays leader, Samuel Stearns, he's also in Fan Forstick. He's good in both movies. I'm not saying Fan Forstick is a good movie, but he's pretty good in it. I mean, the ma it's like with Tim Curry. He's kind of a cartoon character already. He's he's really good at playing these. You know, he in in Incredible Hulk. He doesn't just say, you know, I guess there's a fifty fifty chance. No, he says, oh no. <laughs> this it's so extra. Like you don't need to do that much. Just to, I really hope he gets to play a a full on like, really ridiculous comic book character. He's he's perfect for it. And Leader could definitely, like, they could play it low-key, but I hope they go full, what is it, whole hog, or what, is, you know. And Sam goes to talk to Isaiah Bradley, and he's got the shield, and he's basically saying, you're the one who should be wielding this. You know, it's, it, it is this thing, like, Sam doesn't feel like it's his. He doesn't feel like he should be the one. And in, in a way, that is one of the reasons why he is perfect for it. You know, it's, it's that thing of people who want power 
shouldn't have it. You know, they're the ones who are going to abuse it. Is that what I think it is? Keep it covered. Those stars and stripes don't mean nothing good to me. And we get more details about how badly Isaiah was treated after his acts of heroism. And, yeah, you know, and, and Isaiah and the others were told that, ah, what's it called? Tet tetanus shots, I think it says. And, you know, yeah, so they weren't told what they were shot up with, which is, you know, and, and yeah, like in the comics, some of the serum made the man unstable. These are a lot, a lot of these details are very accurate to the comics. And, you know, and, and it is a lot like, you know, in, in the in the comics, uh, that storyline is very inspired by the, I want to say, Tuskegee experiment, which, yeah, you know, in real life, it wasn't super soldier serum. It was, I want to say, syphilis. And, yeah, they basically used these black people as guinea pigs. You know, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, the, the. People who say that black that that white people have never done anything wrong to black people, read a book. Now the the uh, I, I didn't come up with I, I I stole that from Alan Moore when when he criticized me, he criticized three hundred and said uh, you know I, I think the thing was that thing about Spartans calling ah uh, was it people from Athens maybe calling them boy lovers. I mean, come on. Read a book, Frank. But yeah, the the so so it's it's a I'm I'm really glad it was turned into a comic and now it's you know, I mean so, so far it's it's been verbally you know, it's it's possible. Given that we have so many of the details now, I I think it's it's possible we're not going to see it on you know, on screen. But even being told is really powerful. And, you know, Isaiah says everybody thinks that he's dead. And, it, like, when, when, you know, when he said that the, his, they told his wife that he was dead and they didn't let him read the letters, you know, just, yeah, really devastating. They, they really treated him terribly. And that is, you know, again, Isaiah Bradley, that's fiction, but it's based on a lot of real, you know, the, the, Amer black people have been used by America as just disposable labor and, and treated like they're not human for hundreds of years, you know, and it's really, I'm, I really appreciate that something that is this widespread, you know, I, I don't know the numbers, but I'm guessing, like, maybe millions of people around the world are watching this show, and, you know, f not all of them, you know, some of them are just going to be like, ah, that can't be real, but, or, you know, but some of them are going to be like, wait, what, is that, did something like that actually happen, and they're going to look it up, and, you know, they're going to appreciate more that it is important for America to do right by black people. Now, but yeah, you know, Isaiah has so many powerful lines. You think things are different. You think times are different, and that is the thing. You know, our times different. Have has America grown since that happened? You know, the the yeah, and they erased me, my history. They've been doing that for five hundred years. They will never let a black man be Captain America. No self-respecting black man would ever want to be. And that is, you know, I, I think... I mean, at the, at the end of this episode, Sam basically, you know, he... I mean, it's not that the government considers him Captain America yet, but that is, he has basically, he's ready to be Captain America. And, yeah, Sam calls Sarah and says, I'm coming home. And, again, they, you know, they have a conversation. It's, if you had asked me 20 years ago, if, or if 20 years ago you had told me one day one of the things you're going to be most hyped about, that you're going to especially love about a comic book 
adaptation is the conversations. I don't think I would have believed you. And, you know, if you go back, like, there have been a lot of badly written dialogue, you know, and, and it's usually just, for, for some of these movies, the, the, you know, the, the plot and dialogue and character stuff is just there because it can't be two hours of nonstop action. There has to be something else. But here, it really is, like, this is, this is a, such an intelligent exploration of these issues. Just like Mom feeding every kid in the neighborhood. And montage of Sam calling the neighbors, calling in favors. And, yeah, the, the, others have said that the, the fixing up the boat montage is super cheesy. It is, and I love it. And Bucky helps move something heavy and comes, yeah, and comes in with something for Sam from the Wakandans, and we don't get to see it yet. Why didn't you use the metal arm? I don't always think of it. I'm right-handed. Was that line there for the audience members who keep saying that he should use his arm more in fights? Now, the, the, let's see, there was, excuse me, right back, back. There was a, one second. Right, one of the Easter egg people said that the that suggests that he's no longer thinking so much as a soldier he's or it's certainly not the winter soldier you know he's he's not that anymore because one of the strongest aspects of the winter soldier was the metal arm you know if, if you're trying to kill people you'll want to lead with your strengths but if you're just a normal person you might forget that you have you know so and yeah a montage of the titular characters fixing up a fishing boat was not something I expected to see when we met Sam for the first time and Bucky for the first time in the Winter Soldier mode in Captain America 2, but I'm glad we got here. And Bucky says he'll be fine in a hotel. Sam insists that he stay with them. The people in this town are the most welcoming in the world. Don't flirt with my sister. Because if you do, I'm not... What's this he said? I'm gonna have... Cut up and feed you to the fish. Carlos cut you up and feed you to the yeah. I really appreciate that Sam, being a black man from the South, is such a big part of the, you know, because this is, like, for those who don't know, the, the you know, Sarah and the, the neighbors, and, and, yeah, it's very typical, so, you know, it's, uh, let's see, Southern hospitality, I think, is the, is the term for, you know, if you're a guest in the South, and, yeah, they're incredibly nice, I've, you know, yeah, I once was engaged to a southern woman, so, let's see, and, yeah, John talking to Lamar's parents, and I'm guessing sister, is legitimately moving, and Sharon tells uh, Batrock she has a job for him, she's the one who got him out of prison, and, I mean, last time we saw him on this show, he wasn't in prison, he, he got out, so, I think there's some chance that he was. Uh, well, let's see. In in the in the Captain America in Captain America Two: The Winter Soldier, he was like in Shield custody or something. The last time we saw him, and yeah, I could imagine that they would eventually be like, okay, we got everything out of this guy. We're gonna, we don't need him for more. Let's give him over to the what was it? What did she say? Belgian authorities or something? You know, Belgian prison. For, for some for some goodwill from from the from their government, you know. So yeah, after that happened, Sharon and you know, Sharon would be aware of that. She was working for SHIELD when that happened. And yeah, once she you know, went off the deep end, started doing incredibly unethical stuff, yeah, she got him out of prison because she you know, like you know, when she calls him, this is not the first time they, you know, this like she may have gotten him to do favors before. Now, let's see. There, there are a couple of things in earlier episodes that haven't had payoffs yet. So, I think there's still a chance. Like, for example, several cameras filmed the the uh, Bucky in Winter, you know, supposed Winter Soldier mode in Shelby's place in Madripoor. 
and that was, you know, that might mean that he's going to be arrested because that was, you know, rule number two. So, I I think it might come up in the last episode. We really we we don't know very much of what's in the last. Like, there's let's see, we the the trailer showed like a shot of John Walker running in in like a kind of dark area and Bucky like riding a motorcycle and like using himself as a projectile, you know, like. When, when like let's see he runs it into like a uh, uh, one, one of those block cinder block things and like launches himself like a projectile at one of the flag smashers and actually that I'm not sure we have seen anything I I when I saw the trailer which came out just a few days ago I thought that was gonna be like the end of the last episode the the fight between the you know the two titular characters and John. And Bucky wakes up to the sounds of Sam's nephews playing with the shield. And then, again, like, holy crap. If I was, like, 10 years old and Captain America's shield was not 100%, I'm, like, going to stand there and play with it and just, yeah. And I appreciate they don't, like, try to throw it. They can, I, 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 I figure the, the kid can barely lift it at all. So. And, you know, the, then Bucky, like, fully wakes up and he's like smiling because kids are playing and they're like oh you know running off because they're like oh this this shield does not belong to us kind of yeah and yeah one of the easter egg people pointed out we don't see bucky smile much especially since he became the winter soldier like you go back and watch captain america one there are a couple of times he smiles but since then not many smiles i don't come up into the sky and tell you how to do a barrel roll so don't you come down here to tell me how to deal with things you clearly do not understand. Again, really great writing and really, you know, strong female black character. Really, absolutely love that. You know, she's she's not ashamed of being black, nor are the writers or directors ashamed of her being black. They're not, like, trying to downplay. No, she, you know, that is, yeah. Let's see. And we get the scene from the trailers of Sam practicing throwing the shield. It's just that that shield is the closest thing I have left to a family. So when you retired it, I kind of felt like I had nothing left. Gotta stop looking at other people to tell you who you are. Sam, as a black man, knows how important it is to, you know, to, to not have other people try to define him who he is because many of them will have a low opinion of him because they think him being black makes him less than white people and sam encourages bucky to try to make amends he's he's being very very much like steve rogers and that is i i really appreciate like this there there are it would have been easy for them to just say you know, Sam is is strong. He's got wings. He should be Captain America. But no, they're he's earning it. You know, and really, I mean, he has been earning it ever since we first saw him. You know, the the <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> the the let's see excuse me he's he's always been a really good person. Now, and Sam and Sarah have another close talk. I really appreciate the immense emotional intelligence of this show. And yeah, and Sam and Bucky split up, leaving as friends. And you know, the I think at least one of the Civil War, Civil War Easter egg. At least one of the Easter egg people said, maybe it's be the. I think we're gonna see Bucky again. I just I think, the the I, th I think what it is is that. Because they don't currently have leads, it's like at the end of the day, they're not they don't have enough in common anymore to just stay together if they're not fighting. But you know, I'm mean, yeah, Bucky says, if you find a lead, you know, call me. And we see Sam practicing the shield, running, doing push-ups. He knew we need a montage. And the truck, uh, sorry. See, when I say Batroc, 
it voice types the truck. And I don't blame it because people probably try to voice type the truck more frequently than bat truck. But yeah, bat truck is going to help Carly, which suggests that Sharon is helping Carly perhaps as the power broker or an internal or like a you know, link between the power broker and others, which again, like if the power broker is the leader, Ross or uh, Zola, you know, I mean, Zola, if he has like a robotic voice now, he probably doesn't want everyone to, to know about that because that's kind of like, excuse me, it's it would be useful for him to keep something like that secret because there aren't that many robots running around talking in the MCU. And Ross wouldn't want himself to be traced directly to, for example, the Flag Smashers, you know, and the leader... I think he would probably also try to stay in the shadows for some spot. Tonight, we go to battle, all of us, and the camera pans, and they're in New York, and the TV tells us there's going to be an important vote in New York, so we know, and, you know, Taurus tells Sam, you know, there's there's a ping, the flank spacer in New York, Sam sees the TV, so he knows where they're going. Do we really need a vote? We have troops. I can make the call and have the refugees move now. Wow, that is... Yeah, some some of these guys really do not care very much about these refugees. And the Flag Smashers attacks the room that the... And, and I really don't, you know, it's... They're, they're posing as regular people. Like, one of them walks up to another and says... Let's see, what was it? One world, and the other one responds, one people. And it's such, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie, that kind of gave me Hydra vibes, you know, Hy Hail Hydra kind of thing, but, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the Flag Smashers are almost definitely going to be stopped in the next episode. I don't know how they're going to resolve. I mean, I guess maybe Sam is going to pressure the government. I mean, if he becomes the new Captain America, maybe he can apply pressure and say, you have to take proper care of these refugees. And which, again, is a super relevant thing for, for right now. This is, you know, yeah. And Sam opens the box, but we don't get yet get to see what's in the box. I know, I'm not the first one to make that reference. And John Walker makes a new shield in the post credit scene. He is not out of this game yet. And just, you know, and, and, and it's, at least one of these right people pointed out, he's basically like, He's, he's basically, like, perverting, you know, during the fight, they're, they're, you know, he, he did, let's see, he did some of the, he was like a dark version of Steve in Captain America 2 in Civil War during the fight between Sam, Bucky, and John, and now he's like a dark version of Tony Stark, you know, in, in his man cave with a box of scraps. And, you know, and, and the, he's making the shield out of, among other things, his medals. So it is, like, you know, full on the, the yeah, he's, he's turning his medals into a, you know, the, the shield is both defensive and a weapon. So, yeah, this was a really excellent penultimate episode. It really makes us excited about the final episode. Falcon has new gear from Wakanda. The Flag Smashers are attacking the boat in New York. Batroc is back and helping Carly. And, like, he had this box full of, like, grenades and stuff. And he's like, I'm here to kill Falcon. So, yeah. And, yeah. You know, th there were, like, rumors about, like, a bomb. Or, actually, I guess it was more than rumors. I think, you know, they basically said there's going to be a bombshell character appearance. So, that must be Madame Hydra. And I'm very happy with that. I, yeah. So the, the, ah, uh, what's, let's see, what was the other thing I want to say? Yes, one of, one of the Easter egg people pointed out, they're, it's, they're not going to right away do the same thing as they did with WandaVision, where it's like, oh, there's a super interesting, like, you know, uh, Paul Bettany was like, you know, there's an actor in the last episode that I have been wanting to work with for years, and then you know, it turns out he was trolling. It was himself. He's like, I've been wanting to work across for myself for years. But yeah, it's, 
this time it's it's not so but but yeah a, a brief I, I'm guessing the final episode the the last time we see I I think there's a chance that Carly might be killed off I don't know is there is there a chance that like I mean hypothetically it is possible to subdue her and like put her in chains or something that I, I mean if they can you know, they put Wanda in a straitjacket in the raft, because if she can move her hands, she can make red wiggly woos. I, I don't want to see Carly end up in a straitjacket, but I, you know, maybe that's what they would try to, try to do with her. Hypothetically, if she, would she work with Thunderbolts or Masters of Evil? I guess if, if, if she believes that it'll lead to her getting enough power and influence, that she can save refugees, that might be. Hypothetically, if Sam manages to subdue her and like put her in some kind of restraint and then tells her, I'm not going to rest until the refugees are safe, maybe she would... Ah, I mean... No, I guess that might not be enough. To, to make her completely, you know, give, give up trying to, to fight, but, yeah. I'm, I, I'm thinking, theory, the, theoretically, my guess is John will still be alive by the end, and he'll be in the raft or something, be used as, you know, so that he can be part of an anti-Avenger team. Will... I think we will know who the the power broker is, but I think it might be again very end of you know the actually mid credits scene I guess of Avengers one, head turning to face you know to so that the cam you know turning towards the camera so that we can recognize them from the face, and let's see, I think Torres will. Maybe he'll be the new Falcon. Maybe it's just that he'll be, like, the... Uh, I can imagine it might be, like, the end of Age of Ultron, where we just briefly see Sam as Falcon. Maybe we'll briefly see Taurus as Falcon. I think Sam will be recognized as the actual Captain America by the end of the finale. I'm not sure if Bucky... I mean, they said that he's not going right back to Wakanda, hypothetically, I mean, if Sam becomes Captain America, then he's an Avenger, maybe Bucky will become an Avenger, at least temporarily, and, like, you know, he'll show up in, I can imagine he might show up in Black Panther 2, or the Wakanda Disney Plus series, or something, but, yeah, and, let's see, was there any other, I think, Sharon will still be in Madripoor, but I think we might get confirmation of whether or not the, the, sorry, yeah, once again, talking about what I think the, the result will be at the very end of episode six of the show, final episode, Sharon will still be in Madripoor, but we will know, I, th I think maybe there'll be like, uh, you know, she'll, she'll be on the phone, and yeah, post credit scene, she's on the phone, and she's like, you know, it happened exactly like you said it would. But I need, you know, the something something. And then, you know, we'll, we'll hear a voice say the something something is already on its way. And then face will turn to face the camera. And, you know, we'll, we'll see exactly who it is. So, yeah. The... I guess that is... Yeah, yeah, just briefly, if Ross is the, the power broker, you know, he will be in Black Widow. And that movie was supposed to be out before this show, but, you know, the, the, that would mean that in that movie, he, if that movie might end with him recruiting the, the, ah, let me think, recruiting Taskmaster as an, a, a dark version of Hawkeye. And Elena as a dark version of Black Widow. 
and let's see. Yeah, and maybe actually, yeah, maybe the you know the two of them will be approached by Val, and the yeah you know as soon as they agree, you know she'll walk away or yeah it'll, it'll cut she'll she'll be away she'll you know make sure no one can hear her she'll get on the phone say they both said yes, and you know we'll hear and and yeah it'll cut we'll hear the the. Uh, what's it called? Yeah, well here, yeah. Ah, one second. William Hurt, he has a fairly recognizable voice, especially when playing Ross. He'll respond, I knew they would, and turn to face the camp. I'm, I'm thinking either Power Broker will be, re well, yeah, actually, yeah, I'm thinking the, the Black Widow movie will reveal that Ross is trying to gather a team, and this miniseries will end with revealing that he's the power broker and as such has been you know and is working on it it's, yeah and yeah if Black Widow had come out first it would say oh he's still gathering the team now he's also doing this you know but yeah so the actually yeah I mean if they thought that if Black Widow was supposed to have come out before the show went to air at all I guess it's possible they're gonna have to retool some of those scenes but yeah I mean that's possible it's you know it's not like there's gonna be rights disputes or something so yeah that was everything I had written down and I'm fairly certain that's everything I have to say about this episode so yeah extremely psyched to see the ending just under a week I cannot wait and yeah I'm really you know Disney Plus Marvel is the gift that keeps, keeps, keeps on giving. We just keep getting more and more, yeah, really, really psyched about Loki and all of the shows. There's not, there's not a single Disney Plus Marvel show I'm not looking forward to. So that is it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed watching. As I enjoyed watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.